Hey, what's up? It's uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and today I'm going to talk about the envelope. The envelope of a sound describes the way that the amplitude varies over time. Simply put, how the sound gets louder and softer over time. The envelope of a sound is divided into four sections. The attack, decay, sustain and release. This makes up the abbreviation ADSR, which you will find on a lot of audio gear, like on samplers and synthesizers. The attack is the time that it takes to go from generating the sound until it reaches its full amplitude. Most sounds have got a short attack time, especially drum sounds and, uh, and picked sounds. Some sounds, for example generated by a bow, will have a longer attack time, like a violin or a cello. The decay is the time it takes for the level to drop to the sustained level when the attack time has passed. The sustain is the level at which the amplitude more or less stabilizes. Longer sustained sounds, like again a cello, have a much longer sustain than a short or a transient sound like a snare drum. The release is the time it takes to go from the sustained level into silence. The release is really the tail of the sound. Let's take a closer look at the envelope of uh, different sounds and uh, let's also listen to what they sound like. Here is the envelope of a snare drum recording. You can see it's really short, so we categorize this as a transient sound. You can see it has a really short attack time. This is the envelope of a kick drum. You can see it's also a transient sound and it's got a really short attack time. Let's take a look at the envelope of a violin. I've got two different envelopes here. This one is uh, showing a longer tone and this, uh, these are obviously a lot shorter. A guitar can have a really short envelope when it's being played with a pick, but it can also have a much longer attack when it's uh, being played uh, with fingers and playing a chord. Let's take a look at these two envelopes and uh, listen to these. This is the envelope of a saxophone and uh, it can create a lot more crazy curved envelopes than this, but uh, this is a pretty good example. Let's take a listen at uh, this one. This is the envelope of a trombone, and let's take a listen at that. The cool thing with these instruments is really the way that you play them uh, will have a great influence on the envelope. Let's take a look at this uh, flute envelope right here, and uh, you should probably be able to recognize this tune. A piano has a sustain pedal, so it can actually increase the sustain. And I've got a recording here in which we uh, at the end let go the sustain pedal, so you can hear the great influence of the pedal. Note that depending on the sound that you're working with and the location that this sound has been recorded at, the release can contain some of the natural reverb uh, of the acoustics of the location. So that's already blended in this till and it's, it's not part of the actual release of the instrument, but it's been added by the room. Trying a different microphone or a different microphone position, like close micing it, would uh, make a big difference on the release till of the sounds that we record. You will commonly find these uh, names on uh, samplers or on synthesizers where we can shape the sound. And if you want to shape the sound of something that we've already got recorded, we can use gates and compressors to still shape some of the, the envelope of a sound. So this was uh, explaining the envelope for today. I'm uh, Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials and I hope you've uh, learned something today. If you uh, want to know more about the gates or the compressors or uh, equalizers, filters, you should uh, check out some of the other videos on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, I hope to see y'all soon. Peace!